Well, good morning, Crossroads. I am so glad that you have joined us today. We are kicking off a brand new series that is called Crossroads United. And I got to be honest, this is something that I believe is really, really important because what we realize is that we are united in our faith in Jesus. And that's where we're starting off in this series. We're realizing that that which unites us is far, far greater than anything that would divide us. What I always enjoy when I'm doing wedding ceremonies is just the beauty of two people sharing their vows with each other and this expression of just absolute full love for each other. And always, you know, throughout these ceremonies, I would say probably 80% of marriage ceremonies today have some sort of unity ceremony where they do a unity candle or unity braids or unity sand. I saw some people who branded some wood together. They've got all sorts of symbols for showing unity. Well, what does that mean? That is the symbol of two becoming one, just an inseparable bond that unites them and makes them stronger together. And I gotta be honest with you, as we dive into this content today, I believe that's the prayer that God has for us as followers of Jesus, that we would be so united in him that that unity in in our love and our faith in Jesus brings us so together that we become stronger together. I think that is the heart of Jesus. And as we dive into John chapter 17 today, look at the prayer of Jesus that he prays for us to be unified, we're going to realize that this is something that lies heavily on the heart of God. He longs for us to be united in him. And I think the the significance of that comes from the reality that when the world that is just in all sorts of division and chaos looks to the church and sees us unified in our faith in Jesus, you guys, that builds the foundation for a light, a beacon of light that shines in the darkness, that draws people to Jesus. Because that unity is not normal. That unity that we have in Jesus is sacred. And I want to encourage you to think about the reality that that kind of unity only happens when I say yes to Jesus. And when we talk about salvation, there's the understanding and there's the reality that that my salvation begins by saying yes to Jesus. When I say yes to Jesus, I say, yes, Jesus, I need you. I believe, Jesus, that you are Lord, that you came to planet Earth to die on that cross for my sins. Come into my life, forgive me, make me new. That is how the salvation experience with Jesus begins. That's where your relationship starts, and that's where everything in your life changes. But I would contend with you today that we are called to say yes to Jesus every single day. When Jesus speaks to me, when the Holy Spirit convicts me and says, hey, Tim, there's something in your life that you need to get rid of so that we cannot have a barrier here between you and me, that's when I say, Jesus, yes, I'm letting go of that and I'm giving that to you. That's me saying yes to Jesus. That's me becoming more like Jesus. And I think that our faith, if it's going to be the number one thing in our lives that unites us with Jesus and with each other, we have to be committed to saying yes to Jesus every single day. And so I'd encourage you to think about that as we dive into this passage of Scripture today and talk about the importance of being united in one faith, the faith that we have in Jesus. Recognize what Jesus is praying here in John chapter 17. We're finding him here in the Garden of Gethsemane. And this is a sacred moment. He has just spent time in the upper room uh, washing their feet, sharing communion with them, letting them know, hey, some some bad things are about to happen. I'm about to be crucified. I'm going to be going away for a while. And, And this is a pretty dark and deep moment. The disciples can't fully grasp what Jesus is talking about, but they go off to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Let's recognize for a second here, this is an agonizing moment for Jesus. He knows what's about to happen. He's about to be crucified, nailed to a cross, suffer an agonizing and torturous death, and he's doing that for you and he's doing that for me. And it's in these moments leading up to his crucifixion that Jesus prays this prayer that we find in John chapter 17. I just encourage you to think about the significance of us being unified in Jesus, unified with each other as we unpack the words of the prayer of Jesus. He begins by praying for himself in this moment. It says, after saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. This is really powerful. Jesus is praying for himself here, but he's revealing a couple of really important things. 
See, in this prayer, Jesus clearly reveals, number one, the establishment of his authority, all right? He has been given authority over everyone. He is the ultimate authority. He doesn't have to wait for people to count the votes to see if he's in charge. He's already there. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. There is no one like him. All power has been given to Jesus. He has the ultimate authority in this world, in this universe, in my life. Let's make no mistake about that. He reveals that. Then he realizes and he reveals the extent of his power. The extent of his power is that Jesus has the power to give us eternal life. Think about that. That's something beyond what any of us can ever even think or imagine to do for ourselves. Jesus has been given all authority, but now the the realization is the extent of his power is that he can give us something that we cannot possibly do for ourselves. He can give us the hope of eternal life, the highest possible life for mankind. This is the authority, this is the power that Jesus has. And then you realize that he reveals the essence of what eternal life is, because the essence of this eternal life comes from knowing God. It comes from saying yes to Jesus. It's all about my relationship with him. And there's some powerful stuff that he reveals here. He's been given all the authority. His power is so great that he can give us eternal life. The essence of that eternal life begins by knowing Jesus. That's why my faith is so incredibly important. I have to say yes to Jesus. I want to ask you this today. Have you said yes to Jesus? Have you taken that first step toward him? Have you invited him to be your Lord and Savior? Have you asked him to forgive you of your sins? My journey with Jesus submitting to his authority, experiencing the life that he can give me, starts by me taking that first step and saying yes. Because the honest truth is, he has done everything. He has prepared the way. It's sitting right there. It's a gift that he gives each and every one of us. I just have to say yes to this unbelievable gift that Jesus has for me, this gift of eternal life. And that begins by saying yes to him and then having a relationship with Jesus. This is powerful powerful stuff. And I got to be honest with you, this thing, this faith that we have in Jesus is what unites us all. It is what brings us together because it's bigger than anything else this world has to offer. When I put my faith in Jesus, I'm submitting to the ultimate authority of the universe. I'm recognizing his power is far greater than mine. He can give me eternal life. I have hope. I have a future. I get to have a relationship with God and I get to do this with other people. That's something that unites us. That's something that creates a bond that is more unbreakable than anything else that you will ever experience on this planet. There's no sports team that can offer that kind of bond. There's no work environment that can provide that kind of unity. There is nothing that compares. This is what unifies us. It's our faith in Jesus. Now, I want you to consider the, the words that he prays for his disciples. Now, Jesus shifts in this prayer from praying for himself to praying for his disciples that have gathered around him because he knows that the next few days, weeks, months, and years are going to be difficult for them. They have an important mission to go share the good news of what Jesus is about to do. And here's what he prays for them He says, I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world either. He said, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy, separate them. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. And this is powerful. I mean, he is laying it all on the line for his disciples. There's the recognition here that he's making a huge sacrifice. He's laying his life down so that they can have the power, they can have the truth to go let the world know what Jesus has done for us. He's praying for them. He's praying that they will have power, that they will be protected from the evil one. And make no mistake, this is the same prayer that Jesus prays over you and for me. This is his heart, that we would be drawn to his truth, that we would be unified in that truth, that we would be on mission to share that truth in love with everyone that we contact because there's nothing more important. There's nothing that bonds us more or unites us more than our faith, than our relationship with Jesus. It changes everything. And if that isn't good enough, consider the reality that Jesus then makes the final twist in his prayer and he starts praying specifically for you and for me. You don't believe me? Check out what it says. 
He says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. Hey, that's you. That's me. Because 2,000 years later, here we are worshiping Jesus and united in faith in him because these disciples went out and shared the good news to the ends of the earth. We are the ones standing here 2,000 years later who have put our faith in Jesus because of the message that they spread. Jesus is praying for you. He is praying for me specifically in this moment. So you're in the Bible. You're right here. I just want you to know that. And here's what Jesus says. Listen, I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I mean, at this point, what we see here is that the burden of this prayer is for unity. Jesus, his heart, right before he was crucified, was so full of this passion that this was his prayer for you and for me. He prayed for us 2,000 years later that we would be one, united as one in our faith in him, that people in the world that don't know Jesus would see the love that we share, the joy that we share, the generosity that we have in sharing and joy for the mission of connecting people with him, that people would be just absolutely drawn to the light that comes from people being unified in their faith in Jesus. This was his heart's cry. And here's the thing, when it comes to our faith in Jesus, make no mistake, that is the ultimate game changer. Because right now in our culture, there are a lot of people that don't have any faith in Jesus. Truth is something that people shy away from. They don't like to define truth as being absolute. People shy away from the reality that, man, God's word is truth. God is truth himself. It's, it's kind of, now we're in a day where it's, it's my truth. It's his truth. It's her truth. The truth is, has become subjective. And the reality is, man, it's the truth of God's word, the faith that we put in Jesus that unites us and changes everything. Because think about this reality. When I choose to believe the truth that is Jesus to put my faith in him, let's make no mistake, that changes everything about my reality. When I don't have a faith in God, my life has no purpose. I came from an explosion in, in the universe. There's no meaning to life. There's no ultimate future. But when I put my trust in Jesus, that changes everything. Because Jesus is the answer to my origin. I know where I come from. I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. I have been made in the image of God. I am his child. That means my life has purpose because it says in scripture, I have been made by God. I have been made for God. He has a plan for my life. He has created me to do things that he prepared in advance for me to do. My life has purpose. And not only that, but my life has a future. God is going to prepare a place for me. He gives me the hope of eternal life. That's the authority that Jesus has. That's the power that Jesus has. I can experience that because of my faith in Jesus by having a relationship with him. You guys, my faith changes everything. And when I'm going through life with other people who have put their faith in Jesus, that creates a bond, I'm telling you, that unites us like nothing else this world has to offer. And the heart of Jesus cries out to see that we would be living as one, united in him. Because Jesus recognized more than anyone else, that's why he came to planet Earth, to seek and to save us, he realized that that unity would change everything. I want you to consider that when it comes to the essential beliefs that we hold to be true. Here at Crossroads, we have some essential beliefs that these are deal breakers, all right? These are the game changers. These are non-negotiable. There's a lot of things that are non-essential, but the essentials, we fight for. These are the things that are really important. And I think it's really healthy for us sometimes to just stop and consider what are the essential things that we hold to be true. When I talk about my faith in Jesus, what are we talking about specifically? There are nine essential beliefs that I want to walk through here for a moment, and I just want you to think about how these beliefs and how this faith changes your life. I want you to think about how this impacts the way that you are saying yes to Jesus on a daily basis and what that faith means to you, because these are the beliefs that are essential that we hold to be true. Number one, consider this. We believe in one God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the doctrine of the Trinity. This is the idea that God is three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And I think a lot of times people fall into the trap of trying to oversimplify this, right? Like, oh yeah, God's easy to understand. It's like Neapolitan ice cream. It's chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla. Just like that. Or it's like water. It's liquid. It's steam. It's ice. No, it's, it's much more, you know, it, it's much more intricate than just that. Those are things, those are illustrations that help us picture how God functions. But the reality that God is one single God 
He functions as the Father, as the Son, Jesus Christ, who was God in the flesh, came to planet Earth to pay the price that we could not pay so that in Him we could have eternal life. And it's God, the Holy Spirit, who lives in us, who convicts us, who guides us, who leads us into that life that helps us become more like Jesus. You realize that the Holy Spirit lives in us. He makes our bodies his home. Consider the reality of the Trinity of God, God in the flesh, God in the Spirit, working in us and through us and drawing us closer to him. That is what we believe to be true about God himself. Well, secondly, we believe in Jesus Christ, who being one with the Father, became like us to bring about our salvation. That means he stepped out of heaven onto earth, became a man so that we could experience life. He was the only one who could pay pay the price for our sin, a debt that we could not pay. And in John 1, you see an unbelievable description of what that looks like. It says the light shines in the darkness, right? And the darkness cannot overcome it. We see this amazing picture of Jesus coming to planet earth full of grace, full of truth meaning that he loves everybody just the way they are, but he refuses to leave them that way. He challenges us with his truth, the truth. He challenges us to become more like him. We put our trust in Jesus. That's what we believe. We also believe that the Bible is the word of God and that it contains all truth necessary for faith and Christian living. I'm going to tell you guys, the Bible is your ultimate guide to life. You need to be spending time with God in prayer and in his word each and every day. This is a discipline that pays huge dividends because God will speak to you through his word. The Bible gives you, gives you everything you need to experience salvation, to be drawn to Jesus. It equips you, it teaches you, it helps you become more like Jesus. Be spending time in his word. We believe that man is born with a fallen nature and that we need God's forgiveness for our sin. I mean, the reality is that through Adam and Eve, sin entered into the world. Everything got broken. The world as we know it is not the world that God created. We experience pain and suffering and all of the effects of sin. That's not the world that God created. We brought that into the world when sin entered into the world and that breaks everything. It breaks our relationship with God and that's why we need Jesus We are drawn to Jesus because of the hope that he gives us of eternal life, of restoring that relationship that was broken by sin. That's an important and essential belief that we hold to be true. We believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins and rose again, and that by believing in him, anyone can be forgiven and restored to a right relationship with God. I mean, that is why Jesus came to planet Earth. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, will not die but have everlasting life. That's that great hope of eternal life that only God can give us. We believe that to be true for everyone. Doesn't matter what your past looks like, doesn't matter what you've done. We just talked about this last week. You don't have to walk in shame. You were made to walk in God's love. God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Your life changes when you say yes to Jesus. And I wanna challenge you today, put your trust in him. He came to seek and to save you and me That's why he came to planet Earth. He loves you with an extravagant love. You are his child, and that's what we have, the hope of eternal life with him. We also believe that when we are forgiven, the old record of sin is wiped clean. We are born again, becoming part of the family of God. I love what it says in 2 Corinthians. It paints the picture that when we encounter the forgiveness of Jesus, the old self, the old man is gone. Behold, it says, everything is new. Man, what an amazing thing to realize that Jesus, in his forgiveness and his love, wipes the slate clean. Everything about our old life is just gone. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far God separates our sin from us. We can walk in his love. We can walk as a new creation and realize that I have the hope of eternity with him. That is the faith that guides me. That is the faith that unites me, not only with God, but with everyone else who is on this journey with me. Man, it changes everything. I love that. Here's the thing, this is about us becoming more like Jesus. We believe that God calls us to be entirely sanctified and that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can live victorious lives of freedom with hearts that are fully surrendered to him. We can do this because of the power of the Holy Spirit. That means that every single day, I have the power to win the day. It means that there's no temptation that comes in my life that God does not allow me a way to escape. The Holy Spirit gives me the strength to do what is right and to to live for Jesus. Now, do I still make mistakes? Yeah, because I'm human and I'm dumb sometimes. Let's just be honest. But we don't have to live that way anymore. We can become more and more like Jesus every single day. The Holy Spirit gives us that power. 
And I want to encourage you today, in your faith, make sure that it is alive. This explains and defines our relationship with God. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you and says, hey, there's something in your life you need to get rid of, it's when I reject that, that voice of the Holy Spirit, that I find myself in a tough spot because I'm allowing a barrier to stay, a wall to stay between me and my relationship with God. I need to keep my heart tender. When God's saying, hey, I want you to work on this, I've got to walk in surrender. I've got to keep saying yes to Jesus every single day so I can continue to become more like him, so I can be united as one with him, united as one with every other person in life who's trying to follow Jesus. And I challenge you today with the reality that when we are united in faith, united in this attitude of saying yes to Jesus every single day, that creates a bond like no other. It is an unbreakable, unshakable bond because I am focused on becoming more and more like Jesus every single day, and he gives me the power to do that. Here's the thing, we believe that those who have placed their faith in Jesus will have an eternal home with him in heaven, and that those who reject him will be hopelessly and eternally lost. This is where it gets sobering. I mean, you see in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus tells a story, a parable of the sheep and the goats, and what you realize is there are two separate groups of people that he separates. The sheep on one side, the goat on the other. The sheep are those who put their faith in Jesus. The sheep are those who live their lives for, for God walking around in his, in his mindset, doing what he asked them to do, living that life of obedience, of saying yes to Jesus every single day. And when they were divided, Jesus said, you've done it, you've put your faith in me, you've lived the life that I've called you to, welcome to eternity, to eternal life with me. That's the power that Jesus has. And to the goats, he said, I never knew you. And they go off to a place of eternal suffering. I mean, this is a sobering passage of Scripture, and it describes the sobering reality that my faith is important. If I want to have eternal life, I need to put my trust in Jesus. If I care about the people in my life, I need to share this mission that God has given me, to share the hope of Jesus with every single person I come into contact with. That's why here at Crossroads, we have a mission of connecting people to Jesus. This is important. It changes life, both now and for eternity. I believe that the best life we've been called to live is a life that is fully surrendered to Jesus. That's the best life that I could experience on planet Earth, and it sets me up for a great eternal life as well. We have a mission here to connect people with Jesus. I want to ask you this question today. Who in your life needs to be connected with the hope of Jesus? That's the mission you've been given. That's the mission that we have to be fully engaged with and united as one end. We need to connect as many people to Jesus, the hope that we have in him, as we possibly can. The final thing I want to talk about is this. We believe that Jesus will return. The dead will rise and the final judgment will take place. I'm going to be honest with you. This is what brings us the most hope. When I'm asked to officiate funeral ceremonies, and i got to be honest, I get asked to do weddings and funerals. When I first started in ministry, I loved doing weddings a lot more than I enjoyed doing funerals. It's just how it is. But as I've progressed in ministry, I've been doing this for about 20 years now, i got to be honest, I enjoy the interaction that I have in funerals because you know why? Weddings are a celebration of love, and that is fantastic. They're still great. But at funerals, let me tell you something. When you are able to celebrate the hope of eternal life with someone who's put their faith in Jesus, there is nothing more fulfilling, there is nothing better than knowing that we are united as one in faith. We don't have to grieve like those who have no hope. No, we've put our trust in Jesus. That's when our faith is more important than ever. We realize we've we've lived the life that God called us to. We celebrate one who was faithful. And I gotta be honest with you again, there is no one that I've ever met who said at the end of their life, you know, I wish I would have done less for Jesus. No, the life that follows Jesus is the one that is the most fulfilling. It is the one that that breeds the most eternal uh, glory. And I just want to encourage you today, your faith matters. Your faith is eternal, but your faith also, it, it, it expands and extends to the people that you contact with every day. When you are focused on Jesus, when you are saying yes to Jesus every single day, people will see that light shining in your life and be drawn to him. They're going to recognize you have a relationship with God. There's something different about you, and they're going to want to know what that's all about. So I want to encourage you with this. When we have one faith, it unites us in Jesus. There's a unity in life. That's me believing in Jesus. That's what people are drawn to, and it's that genuine, eternal life that only God can give us. It's when I'm focused on that faith, that eternal life, that, that creates a bond that is unshakable. That's the unity that God calls us for. That's the unity that Jesus desperately prayed that we would experience. I believe it also gives a unity in love. This is my lifestyle of saying yes to Jesus every single day, becoming more like him. Not only, you know, building my relationship with God, but letting the love that God has for me overflow into the lives of the people that he's placed into my life. People see the love of God when when I love others the way that God loves me. 
that unites us. That brings us together as one. And there's a power there that, that cannot be matched by anything in this world. I think finally it, it unites us in mission, which is connecting people with God. It's connecting people to this ultimate hope that we have in Jesus. These are important things. This is why it was so heavy on the heart of Jesus that he prayed for us to have unity, to be one in him and one with each other because there is an unbreakable bond. There is something that cannot be matched when people are united as one in their faith in Jesus. And so I want to challenge you today. Make sure that you've said yes to Jesus. That's the most important decision you will ever make. Make sure that you have declared him the King of kings and the Lord of lords that you've asked him to come into your life and to make you to forgive you of your sins because he pays the price that only he can pay. He pays the debt that we could never pay on our own. And that happens when we simply trust in him. But I want to encourage you also to say yes to Jesus every single day. Don't let anything become a barrier or a wall between you and your relationship with him. Draw close to him. Be united as one with him. May that unity extend into the lives of the people you are doing life with so that you are united as one in your faith with him. And as you unite as one in faith in Jesus, may your light shine so brightly that people will see what God is doing in your life and be drawn to him. Jesus, today we thank you for your love. We thank you for the fact that we can put our faith in you. And today, Jesus, we just confess, we declare, there is no one like you. All authority in heaven and on earth, God, has been given to you. And we just declare you are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords, there is no one like you. God, we realize today that you have the power to give us eternal life, and that eternal life comes from the hope of having a relationship with you. And so, God, I ask that you would just give us the courage and the wisdom each and every day to say yes to you and to grow each and every day closer to you and to become more like you. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you today. And we pray this in your holy and mighty name. Amen.